Hello, I'm Jessica Lee. I'm an attorney at the Center for Work-Life Law, and this is Title IX and Pregnancy, What Do Students Need to Know? As a student, you have a right to not be discriminated against under a law called Title IX. This law covers all educational programs in your college and university. That includes classes, lab work, field work, extracurricular activities, or any circumstance where you have contact with your educational institution. Who's covered under Title IX? It's a very broad law which has protections against sex discrimination for all students. But today, we're focusing on the protection against discrimination on the basis of pregnancy, childbirth, abortion, false pregnancy, related conditions, and recovery from all of those conditions. If you aren't covered under one of those, our website still does have some information for you, so we hope you'll review it. What are your protections under Title IX? First, you can't be discriminated against in the form of harassing comments, statements, negative assumptions about you or your pregnancy or your family status. Next, very importantly, you have the right for medically excused absences. You also have a right to academic accommodations. And if any of those rights are violated, you have a right to complain. Your school has to take action to make sure that Title IX is being enforced and that you aren't being discriminated against. First, let's talk about your right to medically excused absences. Title IX protects your ability to take a medically necessary absence for pregnancy, childbirth, or related conditions. That means, as long as your doctor says it's medically necessary for you to be absent, your professor must excuse your absence. You cannot be penalized for taking this leave, and you must be reinstated into the same status that you had when you left. That also means that professors must provide you the opportunity to make up any credits that you've missed, such as exams, other assignments, or even class participation points. Your professor can ask you to provide a doctor's note saying that your absence is medically necessary if they ask other students to provide doctor's notes too. However, your professor can't ask about the details of your medical condition and your doctor isn't under any obligation to provide them with any of your medical details. Pregnancy-related disabilities, just like any other disability, are covered under the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA. Also, Title IX gives you protections. It requires that your university provide any special services that it gives to students with temporary disabilities to you as a pregnant student. Many pregnant students are surprised to find out that they may be eligible for accommodations, but the principle behind it is simple. If you have a physical or mental condition that significantly impairs your ability to participate fully in your education, you may be eligible for an accommodation. Your institution has an ADA office that specializes in connecting students with disabilities with the accommodations and resources they need to be able to succeed. Here are some examples of common accommodations that we see for pregnant students. One accommodation is very simple, just creating a seating assignment that's close to the door so that you can access the bathroom as you need it. Another simple accommodation is the ability to sit rather than stand. We see many students who work in labs, for example, use a stool instead of being on their feet all day. Another accommodation is extended breaks or extended exam taking time so that students can take time out to nurse or can take time out to go to the bathroom or eat food in order to control nausea. Another very frequently provided accommodation is for pregnant students to have the assistance of a typist or note taker for their classes or exams. This is because pregnant women tend to get carpal tunnel syndrome more frequently. Another common accommodation is to provide distance learning options for students who are on bed rest or recovering from childbirth. We also see change in schedules, flexible scheduling for students who need time for medical appointments or other needs. Accommodations don't have to be anything that's on this list. In fact, accommodations are frequently surprising things 
that meet the needs of a particular student. We often see students accommodated by having a different desk that can fit their increased size, or students can request a parking space that is closer to their classes to save them from having to walk all the way across campus. The first step in accessing accommodations is to identify what it is that you need that would enable you to participate fully in your education. From there, just ask. You can seek the help of an ADA accommodations officer or a professor to learn how to get accommodations. Finally, if you have any problems, contact your Title IX office. They're there to help. Title IX also protects student employees from sex discrimination based on family or pregnancy status. There are also a wide range of state and federal laws to protect you as an employee. These laws include protections for accommodations as well as leave and job protections so that if you ask for these accommodations or leave, you're ensured that your job is safe. If you have any questions about your rights as a student employee, there's more information on our site. You can also contact your school's Human Resources Office or other resources such as your union representative. If something goes wrong, you're not alone. There are resources to help. At your school, you can reach out to your Title IX coordinator. The Title IX office specializes in answering questions and concerns, and that's also where you would go to if you wanted to file a complaint because any of your rights under Title IX have been violated. Outside of your school, you can also seek help from the U.S. Department of Education. They enforce Title IX and are ready and able to hear complaints from you on their website, through their email, or through a simple phone call. Finally, you can also contact a lawyer for assistance in bringing a lawsuit based on Title IX. All of the information about filing a complaint or reaching out for help is on our website. One of the important things to remember, though, is to do it as soon as you can. It's often easier to resolve these problems if you report them early, and you may also save another student from having to go through them. Those are the basics of Title IX protections for pregnant students. We hope you'll review our website for more information that can help you. It includes frequently asked questions, model policies, guides on how to file a complaint and where to go for more resources for help. Thank you.